31. From the most able to him but can spell. There you are known. We had rather you were weighed when the fate of all books depends upon your capacities. Well, it is now public, and you will stand for your privileges, we know, to read and censure. Howsoever you bring me all your wisdoms, make your license the same, and welcome. And though you be a magistrate <laughs> of wit and sit on the stage of Blackfriars or the cockpit your rain plays daily, know that these plays have had their trial already. And stood out all appeals, and you now come forth quitted rather by a decree of court. It had been a thing we confess worthy to have been wished, that the author himself had lived to have set forth his own writings. But, since it hath been ordained otherwise, and he by death departed from that right, we pray you do not envy his friends, the office of their care, and pain to have collected and published them. And so to have published them, as where before you were abused with diverse, stolen, and surreptitious copies, maimed and deformed by the frauds and stealths of injurious impostors that exposed them. Even those are now offered to your view, cured and perfect of their limbs, and all the rest absolute in their numbers, who, as, as he conceived them, as he was a happy imitator, imitator of nature, was a most gentle expressor of it. His mind and hand went together, and what he thought he uttered with that easiness, that we had scarce a blot in his writings. Therefore praise him, and read him. And there we hope, to your diverse capacities, you will find enough both to draw and hold you, for his wit can no more lie hid than it could be lost. Read him, therefore, and again and again. And if then you do not like him, surely you are in some manifest danger not to understand him. <laughs> Shakespeare, here we lie shall view thee still, when posterity shall load what's new and think all is prodigy. That is not Shakespeare. Behold! I am he and born to tame you, Kate, and bring you from a wild Kate to a Kate, conformable as other household Kates. I must and will have Catherine to my wife. My mind hath been as big as one of yours. My heart is great, my reason hath me more. But now I see that our lances are but straws. Be sure, our Shakespeare, thou canst never die, but crowned in laurel live eternal life. <laughs> I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. I hate the way you're always right. I hate it when you lie. I hate it when you make me laugh. Even worse when you make me cry. I hate it when you're not around and the fact that you didn't call. Mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. <laughs> All those hands which you so clapped go now and wring you Britain's brain, for done are Shakespeare's days. His days are done, that made the dainty place, that made the globe of heaven and earth to ring. For though his line of life went soon about, the light yet of his line shall never out. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, my state is well. I am a <coughs> gentleman. What is your parentage? But this my masculine use of attire, I am Viola. <gasps> Which to confirm, where lie my maiden weeds? Give me thy hand. And let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. <laughs> we hope that between both men and women, this play may please. <laughs> what, my dear lady, disdain? Are you yet living? Is it possible disdain should die while she hath such meat food defeated as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. <laughs> but it is 
certain I am of the ball, lady. Yeah. 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 I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. Yeah. Yeah. God keep your ladyship still and not mine, so some gentleman or other should escape your guest's face. Oh! Scratching could not make it worse, and for such a face as yours were. Oh! I love you. <laughs> Shakespeare, thou hast as smooth a comic vein, fitting the soft and in thy natural brain as strong a conception and as clear a range as anyone that trafficked with the stage. But what ho? Oh, now I'm alone. Who calls me villain? Am I a coward? Oh, what most brave of I, that I, the son of a dear father murdered, must like a whore unpack my heart with words. I know my corpse, and the spirit I have seen may be the devil. And the devil hath power, that he will use my fear in my melancholy, that he will abuse me to dare me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
every line, each verse here shall revive. Redeem thee from thy curse. And there we hope, to your diverse capacities, you will find enough both to draw and hold you. For his wit can no more lie hid than it could be lost. Read him therefore, and again, and again. And if then you do not like him, surely you are in some manifest danger not to understand him. And so we leave you to other of his friends, whom if needs be, may be your guides. John Hemmage. Henry Condon. My, 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 my,